Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I've got a whole bunch of fish boxes that I need to prepare to go out to their new homes. So I figured I'd show you all basically what I get up to on a daily basis. The courier comes really quite early in the morning, so it's quite an early start for me. Uh, the first step is to open up all of the heat packs so that they can be exposed to oxygen. Um, I like them to start warming up before I put them in the boxes. And then I'll start to bag up the fish. So it's quite a simple process really. Uh, it's just one third water and two thirds air. And I don't put any oxygen or anything in the bags because it's really, really expensive. But you basically just stretch out the top of the bag and then grab it fast to get the oxygen in it. Um, I actually failed that time and didn't do very well, so I'll just show you again. So you just grab it quickly, trap the air in there, um, and then I will secure with some elastic bands. And some people worry about spinning the fish around. I haven't ever found it to be a problem. Uh, and I used to work in a chain shop, so I used to bag up a lot of fish in a day. Um, but you know, sometimes uh, if they're very, very skittish fish, maybe like silver dollars or something, you might want to avoid doing that. So I'll just show you again. I'm gonna stretch out the top of the bag and grab it really, really fast. And that's how you get lots of air in the bag. Now, 100% of these fish made it to their new homes uh, in this video. So we had a 100% success rate, just in case anybody is concerned about this. And uh, we had a bit of a range actually. There was leopard frog placos, there was a couple of the little uh, Rio Paraguay bristle noses in this one. We also had some, oh, what else was there? The zebra ottos as well. So in this tank down here, I was catching a leopard frog placo and uh, it was quite a good tank down here to actually show the process of me actually catching them. And what I try to do, especially with the placos, is just very, very gently scoop them up against the glass. And then you just want to be able to get them up against the, the top of the tank where they can't escape. It's just me trying to show you the little one there that I caught. And if you want to hold a placo, just hold it between the eyes with your thumb and then uh, with your finger on its abdomen. You want to avoid the pectoral fins and the gill spikes, but um, generally, because they get caught in the nets, it can be easier to handle them instead of trying to sort of tip them upside down through the net type thing, because they'll normally end up getting stuck, especially for the larger ones. And then just again, showing you the whole, growing the bag quickly, trapping that air in there, and then securing with an elastic band. And it's funny, a long time ago, I actually used to work for, um, card factory and I actually used to have to blow up loads and loads of helium balloons um, on a daily basis and this actually came in handy it was a good skill to have for fish keeping it's very funny so to get them double bagged because uh, everybody gets double bagged what you want to do is roll the second bag up like a sock um, or a pair of tights and then it should be relatively easy to just pull it over some people actually pop the second bag the other way around, so that if the elastic band fails, you have the bottom of the bag. Um, but I don't really like to do that because um, I've just personally found that they work better if they are the right way up and if both of the bags are the right way up because then if the elastic band fails, we've got a double layer underneath. Um, so when they go in the bags, they will be um, the right way up in the box and hopefully the courier wouldn't tip them the wrong way around and then it would all work fine. So here are some of those zebra ottos that I mentioned. Lovely chunky little fellows, nice and ready to go out. I don't send these if they're too skinny and I like to hold these for a little bit longer. They were not very impressed with me for catching them though. You can see their gills where they've been uh, running away and this was a very very beautiful female Rio Paraguay bristle nose. So we've got more of the little Rio Paraguays in these, a couple of blue phantoms, that's the leopard frog pleco that I caught in that one there. More Rio Paraguays. I think there was a couple of L519s as well. So next up we need to prepare all of the cardboard boxes and put the reflective bags in. 
So I use these reflective bags because they can be recycled in the normal bin collection. Uh, polystyrene has to go into specialist facilities and normally has to go into landfill or just breaks up into a billion tiny pieces. Um, but I will use polystyrene in cold weather. You can see me popping some polystyrene down in the bottoms of the boxes, mainly to stop the cold getting up through the bottom. Um, and for really big orders, I will recycle the big boxes that I get from uh, the fish deliveries. And I use really bright tape to make sure that the boxes can't be missed um, by the courier. Now, some people have had a little bit of an issue with the uh, reflective bags. Some people um, don't necessarily trust them as much, but they are the same ones used by really big brands such as Tropco. And now that I've got the hang of getting them packed a little bit looser and making sure that there's ample holes for the heat packs and things like that, um, it's much easier to make sure that they stay warm. I had to do quite a few practice runs leaving the boxes outside to make sure that they would stay the right temperature, but they do actually work really well. And I had some really good feedback on it recently as well. So they do work, just it's new and different. So people don't necessarily trust them as much. So what I'll do is pop the heat packs um, on the top normally with a few layers. And what I would do is make a hole so that oxygen can get through to that heat pack, which is really important. So that will get taped onto there and there will be a hole for oxygen because the reaction can't take place if that heat pack isn't exposed to oxygen. And then for a big order, Similar sort of thing, uh, I'll still use the double layer, so it's polystyrene and a reflective bag instead of two reflective bags. And then for the um, heat packs, they will go up in the lid. So I won't uh, close the reflective bag up and I will make sure that the top is exposed um, because the reflective bags are just as good at keeping heat out as they are of keeping heat in. So I'll pop a couple of nice big holes in the lid of the box, which seems counterintuitive, but it's so that the oxygen can get through to those heat packs. And um, because I pop the heat packs directly over the hole, um, it means that the, the air isn't actually that cold. But we do want to make sure they are very much in there and um, can't be squashed or if the bags pop, that the heat packs are not going to be in contact with the water, um, which can be sometimes a problem. If there is a burst bag, the fish will normally survive. If they're um, actually damp, they can survive in very, very little water. It's been amazing some of the fish that have turned up with me um, from being on the flights and things that have somehow survived. But if they get cold and if those heat packs get wet, it won't work. So it's a mixture of making sure everything's nice and tight so that water can't get out and that they stay nice and warm but also at the same time making sure that everything is getting a good flow of oxygen so that it stays warm in there. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. A lot of people forget to put the holes in for the uh, heat packs. A lot of people forget to do it. In fact, even major companies forget to do it. So it is really, really important. So you can see here, we've got the 40 hour one in the middle and then the outside ones are 48 hour ones, but they don't get quite as warm. So I use the, the big ones in the middle, um, mostly in the winter, because they, they pack a bit of a punch. And then to be honest, even in the summer, sometimes I can just go with just one heat pack, which is very nice, but I'll never send them without any heat packs. And there we go. Now I'll take them down to the courier and have my first cup of coffee. And then it's time to feed everybody. So I normally feed Pleco Pops mainly because it's very cost effective for me to feed it. Um, for this particular recording, I was actually feeding the Dr. Basler, Basler pellets, um, which I liked quite a lot. But normally it's Pleco Pops mainly because when I go and have my coffee, I can mix it up. And uh, so Pleco Pops is the powdered gel food that we do here at In The Bag Tropical Fish UK. And it is my own creation, created with um, scientists, people doing PhDs on Plecos, um, and about a year of my own research into uh, diets and ingredients and things like that. 
So some people, sometimes it floats for them. You just want to give it a good tap um, to get all the air bubbles out before it sets. But as you can see, all the fish absolutely love it. I'm definitely doing something right with these Pantanalensis quarries. Um, somebody has scooped up five of them. Uh, so five of these, including the two coloured up males, are going to be going to a new home. But I'm hopeful that there's at least one male and two females that I can maybe keep. I'm thinking that the smaller ones haven't coloured up yet because of those two dominant ones. Because it took about a week after the first one coloured up for the other ones to start as well. So you can see lots and lots of really healthy, chunky plecos. And the pleco pops really does make everybody come out as well. Um, I'm always amazed when people say they don't see their plecos because I see everybody all the time. But maybe that's just me. So once everybody's fed, I'll be answering people's questions. I have lots and lots of messages to answer all the time. Um, and I'm always catching fish out to send photos to customers. Very, very busy lots of social media and then in the afternoons I will be actually preparing the pleco pops so here what I'm doing is I am grinding some daphnia in a mortar and pestle all of the ingredients are ground up by hand in this little thing um, I do actually use it properly this is just me starting it and trying to film uh, grinding while uh, holding a camera so this is what it looks like once I'm finished. So I'll do this in small batches and then the ingredients will be combined. I'll do the same with the black soldier fly larvae, which then get turned into the uh, chunks. And the same with the general grazer and the algae grazer, just combining the ingredients for those. Then printing off the bags and uh, using a, a, what's called a funnel to pop it in all of the bags and then sealing them all up. So that certainly keeps me busy um, and those obviously go out in the post. But all of the fish do really enjoy it as well. I will probably do a more extended video on the Pleco Pops at some point and really talk about all of the uh, ingredients, um, the science behind it, all of that kind of thing. But to be honest, I think how chunky these fish look and um, how much everybody enjoys it really speaks for itself. So stay tuned for another one and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.